Happy to be over there for the duration. Um, and I think that our mayor made a good point, and I attended that city council meeting, that the PG&E is required, I believe, within 45 days of the issuance of the permit to, to roll out the project concept. So I think it's a good opportunity that, um, that we have and that the city, you're making the plans to do so with the city. So I think we need to make sure that we figure out what time that's going to be for the Board of Supervisors so we can make sure we get the same information. Absolutely. So maybe to the clerk, is that something that's possible for the 15th, or has there been that discussion, or is it going to happen another time? Or? We could make accommodation on your calendar for next week. We have an afternoon that's pretty light at this point. So if you wanted to do an early afternoon timed item, we could accommodate that at 2 uh, p.m. or something like that. The main concern would be, obviously, okay. to uh, be able to return to here in order to give the presentation by 5.30. Okay. Um, is that agreeable to the board uh, to try and make room on the 15th? I don't hear any complaints or concerns, so we'll uh, in. We'll make every op or make every effort to to schedule that in. So thank you very much. Thank you. Another speaker, please. Hello, I'm I'm glad to see you all. And uh, your name for my name is Cecile Cutler. I'm a resident of Fort Bragg, and I've lived here since the '80s. And before that, I lived in Point Arena. Um, I've been a seaweed harvester and a naturalist, and um, I listened to these expert presentations, but one of the things, several things weren't mentioned. These huge, op these huge cables, or whatever they will be called to collect energy, will also collect silt deposits, which will change the tides and, uh, de and change the beaches. And another thing that happens, uh, or will happen, is if they are installed, is a, a great upwelling that is uh, one of the things in the north coast here. The, the upwelling of the ocean feeds the, um, brings up plankton that feeds the whales. And these obstacles will stop the ocean's upwelling and really affect uh, tidal areas way beyond what we can predict right now. And so I urge you to really study this thing and before that um, declare a moratorium to protect our environment. We see what's happening in the world and the world is heating up and resources are being diminished and there's a lot of starvation. We have very serious problems and this will create more of them if it is developed. Thank you. Okay, any other speakers from the public uh, wish to address this item? Can I say a couple more things? Briefly, I need only one minute to just answer the rest. I'll give you one minute. Please step forward. Okay, just. Uh, in an article in the Christian Science Monitor, this area was identified as one of the four most productive marine environments in the world. This is what we are putting at risk for the profits of a corporation. Okay, when we don't have to do it, we can conserve or we can go solar. The other thing that I wanted to add is that the ordinance that you were talking about earlier, which I'm assuming you were uh, talking about Measure O, in conversation with the uh, Coastal Commission, the Coastal Commission says that the Coastal Act allows for energy development off the coast and along the coast, so we have a very big conflict there. We cannot rely on Measure O. We have to get something stronger in place. Okay, that's, um, the other thing is too, I don't know why there's no EIR even for this, this permit process. And, um, I forgot the other thing, so thank your, you. Your name for the record, please. Oh, Judith Vitiver. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, I'll close public comment at this time and, and back to staff. Um, Mr. Kaler, anything additional to add? No, sir. Okay, back to the board. Um, we've identified uh, one further discussion uh, uh, next week. Um, is there any other items to be discussed 
uh, by the board members here. Supervisor Pinches. I I don't think this issue, I don't think, is there anybody on the coast that's for this wave energy product? I haven't seen or heard one yet. All I can say is the more you look at this stuff, the more it makes it look like solar panels is one hell of a deal. Yeah. Thank you, Supervisor Pinches. Um, Supervisor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to, to sort of continue on the, ca the comments that Council made, there are a number of things that we have done in terms of the legal filings and a number of things that we're continuing to do. It's taking a fair amount of legal staff time. We also have secured outside counsel to uh, advise us on key, on key components of this. But um, it is something I think the staff has done a good job. They've devoted a serious internal resources to. And I think that we need to make sure that we continue to um, uh, explore these legal options because and, and regulatory uh, uh, agency considerations in terms of weighing in as Ms. Bina mentioned to us with respect to State Lands Commission, Commission uh, Council also mentioned this avenue so I think we need to continue to make sure that the ad hoc committee is fully engaged on this and working with staff and we're engaged also as the mayor said with the city as a partner in this and the fish group and other stakeholders, which Mr. Kaler has also, um, there's, we've committed resources to that through staff. And we need to make sure that we continue to stay vigilant about this and continue to move these, these topics forward. So we're making sure that, as one of the speakers said, from every aspect and every angle, we're looking at the resources that we have to make sure that this is a public process and that we're at the table. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Colfax. I'm a member of the ad hoc committee to, with Supervisor Smith on Wave Energy. I did not make the event back in January. Uh, I was out of the country at that, or out of town at that particular time. Uh, I have problems with a representative of a particular entity that comes here and says, we're going to put on a session on a certain time, certain place, certain date, so you can all understand what we're doing. Uh, United Fruit can do it, uh, Toyota can do it, they can have these kind of events. But that doesn't mean that we as an entity, the supervisors, should be responding to this. I have no reason in the world to want to listen to a sales pitch by PG&E. <laughs> And I, and I say this with all, with all seriousness, I, I don't want to be in a position of simply saying we're dismissing this uh, opportunity or whatever. But the fact here is that from what I have seen and what I have read, and this goes back 30 years, this is not, it goes back a thousand years, go back, it goes back to Archimedes. But the reality here is I have seen nothing here, including the 7,000 pound uh, pipe, that, uh, hollow pipe here that's been passed uh, before us. But I see no particular reason to do anything more as a political entity than to make sure the county council is on top of this, make sure that we are tracking each and every move by each of the sales outfits that come in here, the entities that come in with a lot of money and have every intention of seeing if this works. If it works, it's great. If it doesn't work, well, it's only the public's money. But the reality here is for us to simply say, well, next week, uh, because uh, a gentleman, well-spoken, probably a really decent guy, uh, stands up and says, I'm having a session like this, we say, oh, five supervisors will come in and sit and listen to you, or we'll work out a time when we can hear this. I really think here that if this is a political problem, then we deal with it as a political issue, and it's going to require the mobilization of the community the way it did uh, back in the 80s to deal with offshore oil. The supervisors did not play a major role in that, if I can remember uh, correctly. The reality here, right?